Hello, and thanks for tuning in for another episode of Sundays with the Boys. Tampa Bay's number one rated R podcast with your boy, Chauncey. It's your boy, Daddy. Episode 44, back again, live back again. again. over here with Barack Obama numbers. Oh, Jackie oh. Robinson numbers. I think it was 42. 42, I want to say, yeah, my bad. Robinson. My bad. We're here, though. I could be wrong. I don't even watch baseball, so I don't even know why the fuck. I think it's 42. Uh Because there was the movie 42 with Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick Boseman. I've never seen that movie, actually. I'm going to put put it on on the list. list. Yeah. Put that on the list for today. We're on that elevator. (laughs) You're on that trip on that elevator, Teddy. Not not being high for like the past six weeks. I've been able for. I've, I feel like I've been able to hop on your elevator a lot it's, easier. It's a lot easier because you're so fucking retarded. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, hard R. Hard R. I'm so hard sorry. R. I didn't mean to do that. But yeah, man. Seems like you've been on this elevator a lot more lately. Yeah, man. Last night with the eventually. Facts. So yeah, me and I don't know if we've discussed this on the podcast, but me and Teddy had this thing to where... Somehow we'll just say exactly the same thing at the same time. With the same tone and the same inflection <laughs> same and everything. Inflection. It's like we share the same brain cell. <laughs> it's so crazy. It's because I'm able to mimic him. So we have it to where it's like, you know, we, we, we're we just on this elevator just <laughs> going up to our floors <laughs> of stupidity. <laughs> you know what really fucked me up? Because we had the girls over yesterday. Uh, the ones from uh, Lebanon. And they had asked us <laughs> what our elevator music was, and you said tequila. <laughs> Instantly, <laughs> fuck me up. Instantly said tequila. <laughs> no thought put into it at all. Because what I was thinking was uh, the Manamana song. Do do do. Manamana. Do 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 do. That was kind of close to tequila. Yeah. Manamana tequila. <laughs> do 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 do. do. Oh my god, no. Oh man, thanks for tuning in, Johnny. Johnny's been a loyal listener. Johnny, hey, since he's found out about us. Since he's found out about fuck us. Fuck Lucas yes. for not telling him facts that we were up and running type for shit. For a whole like, year. A still, whole year. A whole year. Try this man, bro. Facts. We could have had facts. Johnny as a loyal listener the whole time. The whole time. Spreading the word. I don't know. Do you follow us on Instagram, Johnny? I think you do. Sundays never felt better. I don't know if he does, but but we're back in there. Right. Sundays never felt we're better. Back we're back in, in there, there with though. the post. So yeah, man, you may want to start checking our post out on there. Good. I don't know how avid you are on the Instagram. Yeah, I, I try to, you know, anything that's relating to like, you know, pop culture or anything like that, I try to put out there. There is one that I wanted to do, and I'm trying to do it where I'm breaking it down into categories of like film, gaming. Uh, news, mm-hmm. shit like that. Um, they, a guy has actually cured type one diabetes. For real? Yeah. Huh? He cured type one diabetes in his own son. Wow. Uh huh. Both of his sons got type one diabetes, and he was he's been working on a cure, and he was doing it with um stem cells, I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was basically he had to reverse engineer what causes the diabetes to not like properly produce shit in the pancreas or something like that so mm-hmm. he had like a whole bunch of pancreatic cells and he's been working on it for I think like 10-15 years Wow! and he actually solved uh, or at least cured type 1 uh, diabetes in his first in his, um, yeah his first actual uh, human human experiment experiment yeah. yeah human testing yeah that's crazy so this could be something big and as long as you know big pharma doesn't get their hands on it you know with we could probably save a lot of people's lives. Definitely. Get my yeah. homies free of this diabetes. Do you let go of me, you chocolate cake? <laughs> you let go. <laughs> let my people go. <laughs> free them from the diabetes. <laughs> Treacherous diabetes. <laughs> Get is, creepy. Is a hundred acre assassin in, or whatever the fuck that dude's name is? A hundred acre assassin. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like some Winnie the Pooh shit. <laughs> dude. 
<laughs> he was on last week. How do you forget shit from last week to the next week? It is, it's fucking mind blowing. <laughs> he was crazy. He was a pivotal part of last week's episode. He, we were seeing like you know, hey, thank you for tuning in. Mm-hmm. Hundred Acre guy was in there, and you were like, hey man, you always join our podcast. Oh, thank was, you so much. And yeah. he's like, I like your guys' banter. <laughs> and you're like, I've never felt so seen. <laughs> Now you have no idea who that man is. I have no that idea. Guy. <laughs> I was just like hundred acre. My immediate thought just wasn't the podcast, though. So that's all that was. I think it's a hundred yard or something. I don't know. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm not seeing who's actually in and who isn't. Oh, it's just Johnny at the moment. Just Johnny out moment. with us. Hundred Yard Alchemist is his name. There we go. There we go. Yeah. This man said Hundred Acre Assassin. Like... <laughs> yeah, Winnie the Pooh out here taking exactly. people out. <laughs> I'm thinking of Christopher Rogers in a fucking Christopher ninja suit. Robin. <laughs> Robin. Oh my god. Christopher Rogers out here sneaking up on the stuffed animals and fucking murking them. Oh my god. <laughs> That's all I'm thinking. About, the wonderful right? thing about Tiggers is Tiggers are. Tiggers just Robin. Tigger just bounces around. <laughs> Fucking Christopher Robin got Tigger in a chokehold. Just get it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that would be insane. Patenting that idea. Oh man, absolutely. <laughs> we, we'd make some pretty crazy uh, robot chicken episodes. <laughs> Some pretty crazy Robot Chicken episodes. I yeah. wish Robot Chicken was still going. I follow one of the people who actually worked on uh, Robot Chicken. Oh yeah, That's yeah she up. did. She did a lot of the stop animation for Robot Chicken. She's pretty cool. She's actually, I think, uh, based out in Orlando, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. Yeah. I wish they would make a comeback. Robot Chicken was hilarious to me, at least as a fucking child. I don't know if Robot Chicken would be able to function in today's society. We got people who are upset that Wonder Woman's bisexual. Oh, man. We're getting into that right now. What a fucking segue. What a segue. What a segue. segue. <laughs> God damn it. I'm good. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. We do got people upset about that. Chauncey has riled up his Facebook viewers with his post recently last night where he made a comment that Wonder Woman has now come out as bisexual and it was we, like two years ago but they're uh, like yeah. making a big thing about it now but. we we just need to hold the same energy keep that same energy right. that we did about Superman's son that we now have to do it with Wonder Woman as well right you know we all have to be upset that Wonder Woman is out here scissoring uh, <laughs> ladies with her and she, I think it's a cri- half Kryptonian too <clears throat> oh my god I want to say that chick is half Kryptonian because she flies away and she I think her name is Zala L I don't know who oh, Zala is is this Power Girl <clears throat> I don't know if that's who it is I really didn't even look too much into it oh. I was, well I read the article but man I read that bitch like you know you know how my memory is yeah you don't you don't you, you read the fucking uh uh, what is it? The title of the article type shit? I do more than you that. You fucking wish you did. I do you more wish. than that. You wish you did. I do a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> I do read it, but you know me and my playback on everything that fucking happened is horrible. So <laughs> I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on it. Working on self love here. <laughs> oh, yeah, Lano. Thanks for tuning in. It's been a while. Since I could hold my head up high. Anyway, so uh, fucking we. I don't know who she's out here scissoring. Right. With her, with her uh, Greek goddess Labia. Um, Goddess Labia. Yeah, man, it's made out of clay, so technically she's nothing but a fleshlight. Is there anything even down there? She's not a Ken doll. She's, she's made not of clay, a Barbie doll. Like, so they just like you know, carved all yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. Carved some lips out. It's magic. It's magic. Yeah, yeah. just she, carve but it out, so. she's not a real person. Not a real person. Therefore, she is a fleshlight. A living fleshlight. A living fleshlight. She's just an enhanced uh, she's sex cyborg. bot. She's a sex doll. Hmm. She gets no opinions. No uh, opinion. She gets she gets no rights. <laughs> what? 
Yeah, she's not a she's not a uh, you know living breathing woman. She's not a living breathing woman. You're yeah, right. She is made out of clay. Right. Therefore, everything that happened in the forties for you know women's rights and shit probably earlier than that. I don't know. Uh, probably uh, women's rights. You know, she Wonder Woman doesn't get to vote. One, because she's not an American citizen. <laughs> okay. Two, because she's not a woman. Okay. She is technically a woman. No, she's a Wonder Woman. <laughs> it's like a Wonder Egg. What? That little chocolate ball where you bite into it and you're I, like, "Ooh, what is?" This? I was thinking of the anime. <laughs> oh no, not Wonder Egg priority. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm thinking of Kinder Egg. That's what I'm thinking of. Hmm. Never mind. Different egg. Yeah. Lono asks, what did he tune into? Oh, just a post about uh, Wonder yeah. Woman being bisexual. Yeah, anyway. You should have tuned in a couple seconds ago, but you were here. I saw you. Anyways, yeah. So let's actually get back to the meat and potatoes. Uh, Chauncey made a, a comment in that we just need to keep that same energy whenever it comes to Wonder Woman being uh, bisexual, as we did with uh, Superman's son. And, um, boy... Did his followers and his friends on Facebook <laughs> not enjoy that? <laughs> Everybody is upset and angry for some reason. For some reason, I don't understand why it matters, you man. Know, like, you know, slightest. You know what else is funny is that your mom listens to this podcast uh, slightly. So you know, hey, hey, mom. Right, where you're first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, this is bullshit. <laughs> this is absolute bullshit. And then Chauncey was like, I don't see an issue. And in my head, I was like, he also doesn't read an issue. So he has no idea. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't read an issue. Uh, but yeah, I just don't care about genders and superheroes. I just don't understand. Like, realistically, like, there's nothing to be angry about. Right. There's nothing to be angry about, to be honest. It doesn't affect like, me. It shouldn't affect your life. And if you feel that it does, I really want you to explain to me how it affects your life. Yeah. Like, you know, I grew up with these characters being primarily heterosexual. And now all of a sudden they come out to, you know, whatever they want to be. I don't see the problem in that. Right. It's just like if your homie was, you know, saying that he gets bitches and all of a sudden he's like, hey, guys, I think I'm gay. Right. You shouldn't be like, hey, bro, no. It's like we're You're okay pushing with the equal gay agenda. rights. <laughs> but we're not okay with equal rights right <laughs> in a sense you gotta you know just that's how you should treat it you know if you're if your favorite character is coming out as gay just be like what if that was your homie yeah. would you treat them any different well, some people would and, and that's if crazy. You, and if you would you really need to evaluate why you hate gay people facts like that's really all it comes down to man like what 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 makes you hate gay people facts but anyways, <clears throat> then we went on a long rant. A long rant. With, uh, <laughs> one of the one of the other people who was just like, "Why do they got to make every character, including Santa, be bisexual? It makes no sense." And then she's like, "You know, stop trying to push the agenda and promote population control for crying out loud," which was hilarious in every part of that because I didn't see that message until I woke up this morning and I could not stop laughing. <laughs> I was in that uh, Dunkin' Donuts drive-through for a solid 25 to 30 minutes and was enjoying mis- myself thoroughly <laughs> very thoroughly enjoyed yeah bro, i had to catch up on the messages when i woke up i was like oh okay i see this is what's been going on <laughs> and i wasn't even gonna get into it i was just like oh no not the population control <laughs> not the population control <laughs> no. this is how they get us <laughs> I'm gonna dwindle America's numbers by making everybody gay. Oh my god, it's gonna <laughs> destroy the planet. <laughs> and uh, the the woman's like, it makes sense. It's not like humans have contributed positively to the earth. Look at the coral reefs; it speaks for itself. Because you know, once you put your dick in a man's ass, the coral reef starts to die. That's not that's, what she said. That's a hundred percent what she said. I'm just reading between the lines. Yeah, that's not what she said, guys. Yeah, man, that's that's exactly how it goes. You kiss a man, a bird dies. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lano's over here just fucking enjoying the shit. 
<laughs> when doves start crying. <laughs> when doves cry. <laughs> this is the moment when doves cry. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, man. That's, that's exactly what happens, man. Oh, man. <laughs> that's hilarious, yo. Every threesome that you have where your girl is out there sucking on a girl's nipple, mm-hmm. dolphin dies. <laughs> Dolphins rape people though, so yeah. Dolphins are vicious. Otters creatures. also rape people. A lot of people rape. Uh, no, wait. Uh, <laughs> oh, you may want to retract this statement. <laughs> I stop myself. You may want to retract that. A statement. lot of animals rape other animals. <laughs> there we go. Please retract. That. However, to revisit, <laughs> a lot of people rape other people too. It's not okay, yeah. but that happens a lot. Almost <laughs> a child becomes an orphan. <laughs> Every time it uh homos perform their heinous act. <laughs> <laughs> nah man, we're pro life out here. Everybody can can go and adopt a baby as long as they're not gay. That crazy. Yeah. That's how it is. A lot of times. Right. I heard that. Yeah, because they don't want it to be um mm-hmm. raised in an amoral household. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of orphanage are backed by uh churches. Yeah, they are. That is accurate. Which I was thinking about this the other day because you know how like in in one of our earlier episodes you asked us about like how we feel about religion and stuff like that. Yeah. So <clears throat> whenever it comes to like witchcraft and shit like that, and they're always like you have to sell your soul to the devil. Doesn't it make a little bit more sense that people in Christianity are selling their soul so that they can be blessed with eternal life after they die? And be blessed with a good life while they're on Earth. Are they not just selling, selling their, their soul? soul to God? Yeah. <laughs> Is that really just kind of the case here? Yes. Yes. Like you know, <clears throat> the, the greatest lie the devil ever, devil ever told was, you know, something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! No, don't do this. <laughs> don't make us that. <laughs> no. Well, you know, I was, I was thinking about it the other day. I'm like, that's uh. It's kind of crazy to think about. It's like, I feel like you can also just link a lot of the bad shit in the world to religion. Yes, a lot of wars are started based off of religion. Mm-hmm. Based off of that, yes. Or a lot of earlier wars, anyways. Mm-hmm. Now it's just based off of who feel testy right now. <laughs> well, just uh, there's co- there's a culture war going on right now. You got yeah, you got that's right. Roe v. Wade might very possibly be turned over in the Supreme Court. Oh yeah. Uh, based off of well, the fact that like they loaded up the fucking Supreme Court with mm-hmm. right wing conservatives, and then uh, also the fact that like everybody's always pushing the the whole God and Bible narrative. Yeah. And, like you know, uh, I think his name is Madison Cawthorn, one of the uh, Republican legislatures. I think he's a congressman. <laughs> he um he's coming out and it's just like he made a stupid fucking analogy where he was like, imagine you're you took a great picture, Polaroid picture, and you're holding it and you're waiting for that film to develop and then somebody just comes by and rips it up. Mm-hmm. How would you feel? You would be you would be insane. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing with with the name of God and the image of God, and we're letting people come out here and rip babies in half like Polaroid pictures. Pretty much is what Jesus he's getting to. Right. No, buddy. That's not how that works not at how all. That works. Fuck not out of all. here. <laughs> wow. So, there's there's a lot going on with that though. Um, I see. So you know, blaming it on the good old Bible, on <laughs> the Bible. Mm-hmm. Damn, I'm on, the, on bibbly dupes. <clears throat> I don't know. I never understand that about people though. Like why they're out here pushing the straight agenda on us. <laughs> why they out here pushing agendas? <laughs> <laughs> Population control. <laughs> Population Destroying these coral reefs. <laughs> no, not the reefs. <laughs> it's fucking insane. Um, just yeah, like I don't, I, I never understood like what would make it an issue on what a person claims that they are. It either be a fictional character or an actual real character. Like you know what I'm saying? Like 
you could read a book about a person who was gay from the beginning and be perfectly fine. And you yeah. could read a book about a person who was perfectly straight mm-hmm. from the beginning the whole time. But the moment that they switch sides, now it's a whole problem. No. Yeah. I don't get that. That's that's the only thing I don't get. Like, I, I feel like that's the same way with people and like their pronouns and shit like that. Or whenever they come out and saying that they're like, you know... Mm-hmm. I'm I'm fucking non-binary, agender, uh, cis-forming, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. Okay. Cool, bro. This is a fact. All right. Just tell me what the fuck I gotta call you. <laughs> Facts. What's your name? All right. Bet. Fact. That's, that's pretty much it, man. That's I don't give a fuck about anything else. The same thing with like the the whole uh, Latinx thing. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck. Right, like, why the fuck did that even have to be a thing? Like, <clears throat> I, I feel like the same thing with like the whole Latinx thing is like you're getting a lot of people who are upset about it are the people who are like, uh, who don't want it to change to Latinx. Yeah, it's not like it's not like these people came out and were like, we don't feel included or inclusive. Right. We want to create our own thing, which I mean, I guess is the way that it happened. But, like, they're not taking anything away from you. Right. You know, say, say if JC still wants to come out here and just say that he's Latino, congratulations, you're Latino, homie. Right. Latinx is just to include people who were born here in the States who don't technically correlate, correlate to, right. you know, Puerto Rican or Dominican or Cuban or, mm-hmm. you know, any of the other mm-hmm. island boys. <laughs> they're just out here trying to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's all it is, you know. Inclusion, you know. Inclusivity. Inclusivity. It shouldn't matter. It has nothing to do with chakras. Right. The mom. Right. It has nothing, <laughs> it has to, nothing do with to do with chakras. It has nothing to do with chakras. Chauncey's mom uh, stepped on the post and said that the reason why we're even relating to uh, sexuality or sensuality is because we're using our lowest form of chakras. Sure, man. I guess. Sure. I thought our lowest form was our root chakra. Is that the chakra for sensuality? <laughs> I don't know. Now you're confused. I think so. I think it is because it is like whenever you're sitting in that position, it is the one that's right there in the pelvic area. <clears throat> but yeah. You know I'm saying like, drop your root, drop your seed in somebody. Exactly. Like Go out here. She still fights for humanity. Like that hasn't changed. Like right. One nothing about her doing has her changed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Outside of her preference. Uh Woody Bush just hopped in there. Shout out to Woody Bush. Woo, that Bush Woody Bush. Right, man. Now, uh, is this Woody's Bush? As in like Woody's Roundup? From like <laughs> Toy Story? Nah. It's just, it's like a it's like wood with a bush on it. That's literally every bush. All bushes have wood. It's like your penis. With a bush? With a bush on top of it. Oh, I keep mine. Uh, <laughs> I keep mine French. <laughs> you keep with a mustache? <laughs> <laughs> you draw a mustache? <laughs> yeah, I. I uh, it's pencil thin. Uh, a pencil thin mustache. You draw a yeah. pencil thin mustache above yes. your penis. I do. I like to. Uh, if I if I could, I'd like to uh, do the top, like leave a spot that almost looks like a like a little French beret, mm-hmm. and then that way my penis can just look like a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's no. not a, it's not a penis. It's a wee wee. It's a wee wee. <laughs> Do you do this? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> what are you going, a little croissant? <laughs> no. <laughs> My little wet baguette. <laughs> Not a wet baguette. Oh I'm stuff this bread with this wee wee. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> right. Anyways, <laughs> fuck. Segway back. Oh yeah, Wonder Woman. Yeah, she's cool, man. She can scissor whoever as long as she protects us. Gotcha. All right. All right. As long as she's still about that life, about saving mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. It don't matter. I don't know what she's doing. I don't care what she's doing with her life. My dick be rolling its own cigarettes. 
Mayun tobacco. It rolls your blunts for you. Oh, a nice Parisian night. <laughs> With a, a crip. <laughs> a crip. <laughs> Why they gotta be Scottish? He's not. He's French. They all just sound alike over there in Europe. <laughs> no, they do. <laughs> they do. They all sound alike, man. Oh my god. Their accents are all different. Outside of this little uh, four foot eight Scottish chick I found on TikTok and Instagram, who, if she is ever single, I will try to marry. Oh, I think yeah. she is actually single. Yeah, she's from Glasgow. Oh, yeah? She doesn't really speak with a Glasgow oh, yeah. accent. What? How does she speak with? <laughs> uh, I think she said that she was raised uh, a little further south in the UK, mm. so she didn't pick up, and her, her parents, like, Anytime that she almost developed that accent, like her, I think her grandparents like stopped her from it, mm. and, like beat her. <laughs> Jesus, um, you're not worthy of the whiz. <laughs> <laughs> you're not here to hear chin and butter. <laughs> but uh, you yeah. weren't on her in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Take off your kilt. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Go upstairs and sleep with a gate. <laughs> no. But uh, but yeah. Um. Anyways, that just uh goes into my size kink though, because she's you know four foot. You nine. right? You like them small? I do. You like some? I like them tall too. <laughs> <laughs> like them small? I like them tall. I like them big. I like them chunky. Yes, I, <laughs> I like them thick. I like them lumpy. <laughs> uh, oh my god! But yeah, anyways, uh, <laughs> people over there in Europe—they all sound alike. No, they don't. <laughs> they do fit the most part. No, it's not Spanish people. No, they don't. They speak Spanish. There's so a difference, but it's okay, Teddy. And the Portuguese, because they speak like deaf Spanish. Deaf Spanish? Yeah, that's how Russell Peters explained it. You know, I was so like, like what? imagine Spanish, but then somebody deaf speaking it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that's what he said. No. Man. This is also a uh, uh, what? What is the word for it? A uh, comedy special taken out of its time. Yeah. You know, mm, 2010. <laughs> out of its time yeah man we've progressed a lot in the past decade have we now yeah man equality uh <laughs> sure man <laughs> <laughs> racial slurs yeah man we, we don't we don't we don't talk down on people anymore except for we whenever we do it oh shit speaking of uh talking down on people yana she just commented back now oh she did i don't know why she keep tagging me stop tagging me bitch yeah teddy you're the guy. You're yeah, the coach. pretty much. I told her that, like, because she keeps on speaking only in reference to her family. So, coming back to this whole, like, Wonder Woman thing where this woman was talking about, uh, you know, pushing or pushing agendas and population control and shit like that, I had pretty much told her, like, dude, if you if you don't like gay people, just say you don't like gay people. You don't have to hide behind all this other shit because she's like, cartoons should not depict any type of sexualization at all like mickey and minnie they should not be kissing because they don't do it on you know uh, mickey mouse clubhouse but there are other versions of mickey and minnie outside of mickey mouse clubhouse where they do kiss they do hold hands they do go out they go on dates right. they say that they love each other exactly donald duck and daisy duck you know what i'm saying like all of that shit happens and just because you don't let your kids watch it because they're like five and under doesn't mean that this Wonder Woman comics where people who are in their teens are reading it should be able to relate to that. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much I came at her and I was just like, you have to stop. Or, um, like, this is a different version than what you're feeding your kids. So it's not relating. So pretty much your entire thread of judgment and anger and hostility is unwarranted. So she came at me and said that I have to stop reading literally into things. 
And she's like, people have family, which consists of multiple people, younger and younger, or, or older, younger and younger. <laughs> younger and younger. <laughs> Those are her children's names. She's from Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> younger and younger. <laughs> uh, but uh, children don't stay one age. Anything um, happening today will make the difference years down the line. And so I just came back and I was like, you're speaking anecdotally. Like, you're only referencing the way that you raise your kids and how you don't let them watch anything else because you're so, you know, obsessed with what they watch and and shit like that. And now she's just going off about other shit. She's saying that uh, she's speaking vaguely because this is an app. She's like, I could really teach you some things about real life. My children are young, but those are not the only people I'm exposed to or care about. Norway is just another part of Earth because I mentioned that, uh, or she had mentioned about bisexual santa mm-hmm. which is not even a thing over here in the states not it's even a thing over only here in, in norway like that, right you know and it's to represent the the 50th anniversary of the decriminalization of homosexuality in norway mm-hmm. also i feel like if anybody has a has a say in what santa is it's fucking norway <laughs> isn't that Create. where that fucking shit was created as <laughs> a story i got right. so i don't fucking know but uh, she's like, she, uh, Norway is just another part of Earth. I don't let these names given to places uh, dictate my perspective of the world. Like, okay, you fucking you border bitch. Because it's like most of the shit that's going on in these other parts of the world aren't going on here. They don't affect your life here for the most part. You know, but meanwhile this is a woman who's like half naked dancing in clubs and shit like that she got all these photos and shit like that but she's the ultimate ideal mom not to say that there's anything wrong with it right but you can't come out here and be you know miss conservative and you don't let your kids do anything and you're some free-flowing person who doesn't even let them eat fast food because they can only eat natural organic things and <laughs> they they're not allowed to see sexualization at all because you still are with the birth father it's a two-parent household because right. all of this relates somehow. I don't understand. Exactly. Fucking people, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, they're getting all off topic where I'm like, bro, you're going somewhere else. Come back where we at. Right. Like, I just, I, I don't understand your right. whole purpose or reasoning behind anything We understand that those things are key things that you, like, you know what I'm saying, that may be going on. That is not what we're talking about right here, though. Right. We talking about Wonder Woman. <laughs> Thank you. Scissoring. Talking about comic book characters. Scissor. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Fictional character. Right. Representation for people in the proper age group mm-hmm. is what we're getting at here. That's it. You know, teenagers who are going through the idea of like, hey, maybe I don't like the opposite sex. Right. That's it, man. That's all it comes down to. And again, it does nothing for her. Mm-hmm. Doesn't change anything for her. Right. Doesn't fuck up the way that she's raising her kids or anything like that. So again, it's unwarranted. Right. <sighs> Bitches. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, revolutionary bro, thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the show. And he's out. Okay. <laughs> but what we talked about was so revolutionary. I don't know. We didn't get to find out. I didn't ask. I well, said it was. Oh. <laughs> I, just, I thought you said we didn't get to ask what's so revolutionary. <laughs> no, no. Don't know how I heard all that. <laughs> We're off the elevator. Sorry. I'm on my own level of stupidity right now. Anyways, how was your week, my guy? It was decent. Yeah. <laughs> Decent, decent, decent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't do much tonight. <laughs> I just did my stuff. Yeah, man. Anyways, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great stuff. Johnsy, thank you so much. We appreciate you for coming on to the show this week. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Harley leave, bro. <laughs> Harley leave. Do, uh, do shit. I do do shit most of the time. I wake up, I watch a movie, I go to sleep. I wake up, I watch another couple movies, and I go back to sleep. <laughs> I watch a lot of movies. 
<laughs> That's a lot of movies. I'm trying to stay safe. From what? This <laughs> COVID. <laughs> We're in a pandemic. We're in a goddamn pandemic. Man, yeah, man. Goddamn pangolin. I'm upset because I feel like every time that we're stepping, uh, one step, you know, getting closer to the finish line, we get pushed back. You know what I'm saying? Because like in the once once the vaccine started coming out, and people were like, "Oh shit, we're taking the vaccine," and like rates started dropping. I stopped wearing my mask. I was like, "Hell yeah, man! Fuck, we good now, bro!" Like right. people are getting vaccinated. We're gonna start heading into a direction where like we're gonna be safe. Nope, not at all. Fucking shit, climb back up fucking they're double masking it up now you know what i'm saying fucking delta variant pops up uh, uh, omnicron percy i well we ain't, i ain't get there yet no. <laughs> and then you know what i'm saying after like months of just still fucking talking and like still seeing the numbers rise i'm like you know what fuck it i'll get my vaccine that way i can be safe and not have to worry about it Mm-mm. and then the omicron comes out feels like literally every you know what i'm saying each step i take Every move I make, <laughs> they'll be watching me. No. Is that not how the lyrics go? It's close enough, but no. They'll be missing me. That's that's the, the P. Diddy version. Is that the one you're going for? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I'll be missing you. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Okay. I got you now. Omicron. <laughs> Omicron doesn't even sound that scary to me. Yeah, it's Omicron. I just fucked it up. No, he fucked it up. He put Omicron in that. Yeah, chat. I know because I originally said Omicron. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Omicron per se. I eat. That's what I say. <laughs> uh, I feel like it could be a little bit scarier. You know, I feel like there's definitely a way that it could be scarier. I'm gonna be like, who's all affected by it? Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Hmm. The um, new COVID variant, Death Hell Spine Shatterer. <laughs> Death Hell Spine Shatter. <laughs> Thunder God. <laughs> yeah, man, that 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 will get me to fucking a quarantine. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Damn. I want us to go back into a quarantine, really. You do. I want them to force everybody back into a quarantine. I want I want them to shut down jobs and no traffic and having making banging money doing DoorDash and working part time at my job and getting stimulus checks. <laughs> I'm here for it. Stim- I hope it gets so bad. Stimmy turners. I'm always here. I, it sounds bad because I also said that I was, you know, a fucking anti life and I want <laughs> like, to kill children and shit. Like, this podcast does not paint me any good light. <laughs> <laughs> I it I have very uh, evil obscure. villain uh, <laughs> thoughts, <laughs> very obscure views. Right, you know, I just I feel like that's the the better way of doing things, man. You know, I had an, an quite a lovely twenty twenty. Twenty twenty one has turned out to be shit. Twenty twenty one has been shit. Yes. You know. Also, we take into consideration that we could have not paid rent for almost a whole month, and they couldn't have kicked us out. We could have did so much money for the podcast. We could have done so much. Wow. Is that even situated? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So they have taken it? Yeah. Oh, okay. They didn't have a choice. They're going to get stabbed now. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And went down there and I was like, Julia, let me tell you something. Yolanda? Yolanda. (laughs) You too. (laughs) I was like, Yolanda? (laughs) Cool, cool. That's what's up. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, Lano said that he needs his bank account to be stimulated again, and as do I. I just would appreciate another stimulation. Stimulation would be mm. nice. Stimulate my brain. Yeah. Missed those days, man. They were good. Back in the day, I'm not a kid anymore. <laughs> but um, yes. Anyways, I I hope it gets worse, and I hope we go into another lockdown. Damn. So negative. Yeah, man. Then all the movies start coming out digitally again, and I don't have to wait for a long time on her. WTF. Yeah. <laughs> so, bebop. You get to watch all the movies you. from the comfort of the, the living room. I could be watching Encanto right now. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wish there was a better one. <laughs> That's just how I be, man. Encanto. We watched that Zola movie. Switch it up. <laughs> <A> Segway. <laughs> Transforming? Is that what Fact. we're doing? <laughs> Fucking rolling out. Transforming segue, <laughs> rolling out. Uh, but hey, uh, yes, 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 yes. So we're gonna step into our movie reviews, and we're gonna <laughs> jump off with the movie Zola. It's an A twenty four movie that's actually taking place here locally in Tampa. And we're back on that I'm elevator. Back to see you on that elevator. Yeah. Hey man, you know, so I, was, sorry, I only had to go to the bathroom. I told you to hold the door for I me. Feel you, man. That shit took, for, mm-hmm. took forever, bro. <laughs> Want to do a podcast in an elevator one day? Like <laughs> <laughs> a fucking actual elevator will set up and everything. <laughs> That's all I can think of. It's a tequila song playing. <laughs> <Dun, dun, dun. laughs> <Be lit. laughs> be crazy we can interview the people that get on yeah man we can interview them for a brief moment right. Which Yo, what, what's your name what you do all right <laughs> bing bong get off <laughs> bing bong no we're not bing bong <laughs> we're no. bing bonging people man no we're not hey ariana grande take a ride on the cyclone <laughs> cyclone. anyways we watched uh zola we watched fucking zola stop doing this um <laughs> It's, movie based in Tampa started off of a actual well it's based off of a true event with some you know sprinkled of uh, bullshit on top of it you know there, there's def- definitely some hyperbole going on <laughs> right, they, they, right they exaggerated some shit but uh, it, it's based off of a true story from a Twitter thread uh, where this uh, woman from Detroit comes down uh, with uh, some friends down here to Tampa I think they were supposed to go down to Miami. I want to say, they were, and they stopped yeah. in Tampa to make some quick cash stripping before they made their way down to Miami. Mm-hmm. And uh, the movie just takes place completely in Tampa from there on out <laughs> uh, because shit goes sideways, fast, um, <laughs> pretty much. And then, uh, um, anyways, this woman comes down with her ghetto ratchet white friend who is dating some other simp who's also joining them and then her pimp so she's got both her simp and her pimp with her simp pimping yeah simp pimping she was sipping on pimping mm. and she uh they drive down here from Detroit and it's crazy being here locally because you're just watching this movie unfold and you're like I know that place <laughs> I know that place mm-hmm, right that's the confederate flag that flies over the interstate probably should not have shown that <laughs> they showed that before a hot minute. they sh- they zoomed in on that bad boy for like a solid 40 seconds had a grip of screen time i was like wow this is what i hate about a24 movies is that they just they sh- so much screen time on shit that's not necessary y'all have Bullshit. scenes that do not need to be there right like that whole driving scene through ebor well not through ebor but, but down like, uh, like adamo 15, 20 like second oh yeah, yeah the yeah, one down like adamo, adamo yeah, yeah. They had the whole little mural thing in the uh, on the side. Yeah, I'm like that whole scene was like a whole like minute and a half, like no reason. It's like, also really weird because they're going, they're taking like turns on streets that have really they're nothing. in the ghetto, <laughs> right? It's really and then like they're pulling up there. to these nice fancy ass houses, right? And it's like I guess if you manage to take one left as soon as you cross that bridge, but if you went any further than that, it's not <laughs> happening. There's Facts. also a hotel that they stay at, and I pass by that hotel every single day whenever I uh, go to work. The and hotel is infamous now. The hotel is infamous. But um, really, really, actually, pretty decent movie though. It wasn't bad for an A24 movie because most of their movies are just like. Eh? Yeah, this was uh, <laughs> this is more comedy than I would say anything else though. Yeah. Um or at least it was for us. We laughed at a lot of shit. Hilarious. Because it's a very So once they get down here to Tampa, they go to a strip club and they don't make that much money, you know, but you kind of see some some shit start to unfold. Mm-hmm. And this is set back in 2015 whenever back pages was blown up. Facts. And back pages is like the Craigslist pussy you know if you wanted some 
some some hooker some situation. Off the wall pussy. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Straight you, off the wall. You, pussy. you go to back pages and you're gonna get you some poon that night. And that's pretty much what happened. Her pimp had set her up uh in a hotel room uh with this other uh the main chick who didn't even want to be there. Who didn't want to be there. She thought she was just going down there to be stripping and then all of a sudden she's now roped into a now you're you're, you're gonna be out. a fucking hoe for the night. You're gonna be pimped out. You're gonna be making some. You sucking some dick and making some money. Basically, you're gonna be stripping. Right. <laughs> Not even. There's no more stripping you're after. Right. That. There's no more stripping after that first scene. Yeah. Like in the slightest. there's there's literally only one scene of stripping, but it's because that girl, she was making. Uh, I think it was. Um, it was like she only got paid like fifty dollars. I think for like fucking this dude for like thirty minutes. Was it one fifty? It was one fifty, yeah. Yeah, and then she's like, "Nah, I'm switching this around. You're now making five hundred for right. fifteen minutes. Facts. And that's all you get. Once your fifteen minutes is up, if you ain't got your nut, get gone or pay again. Or pay again. <laughs> and what was expected, I guess, to only be a two thousand dollar night, turned into an eight thousand dollar night. Mm-hmm. And that pimp was not letting that go. That pimp was like, you know what? We're going to be making some bank. We're not going to Miami no more. We're staying right here in Tampa. You know, we're going to make some good money. you going to sit mm-hmm. here. Your whole job is to make sure that my white bitch doesn't get, get money. doesn't get fucked up. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, you were just security the whole time. Right. Gave her a whole gun and everything. And then they just start driving around. We're checking out, you know. Oh, shit. They're going down 22nd Street. Oh, they're taking a right on 78th here. Oh, where they at here? Oh, I know that where that fucking city is or where that uh hotel is or some shit like that. We just mm, looking at all the, the shit where they got on the uh, over the interstate and shit. Yeah. That shit. The, the crazy scene for me hmm? was the one where they go into that one. It, it's pretty much like a gang's house. Oh yeah, and they got yeah. all them dudes just standing there in boxing. Like so, the dude told us it was two hundred a head, right? For some head. Mm-hmm. And an old girl who's not trying to sleep with anybody is like, uh, I don't think so. I'm going to call my pimp real quick. Right. And we're going to have to settle this. Couldn't get the that other girl? The, the other girl just she dropped ready, to her dude. knees, boy. She was ready, bro. Dropped to her knees. <clears throat> I was like, you know what? Paint my face. Facts. 200 a cool. person? All right, bet. Mm-hmm. Let me get, let me Sad. get, you know, some, this little bukkake going on. <laughs> bukkake. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Bukkake. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what she got. Well, that's literally what she got. Yeah, just that. That was crazy. But so, yeah. um, he didn't ask her. She wasn't about that life. Yeah, she was. She wasn't about that life. Um, after that, they end up trying to go to another person's house, and uh, what ends up happening is the white girl gets kidnapped. Mm-hmm. She get kidnapped by a rival pimp out here, and he got eight one three tattooed on his forehead. Facts. That's, how, That's you how, know how you know he he, from- he, he, he <laughs> out here, boy. That's how you know he out here. You know, eight one three tattooed on the forehead, bro. He bout his shit, man. <laughs> and uh, they got a you know pretty much come together and like get her out of the hotel room and uh the movie pretty much ends like a little bit after that after i'm trying to not yeah, go into some, detail right like about every particular scene or whatever but yeah this is basically about these 48 hours that this is it's a long 48 hours it is because there's a lot of scenes that just don't need to be there In facts it's a lot yeah. of scenes that don't need to be there and it was just like but that's an A24 movie for you if any yeah. of y'all have seen like any A24 movie right Lamb Hereditary Midsummer, right The Green Knight you know it was crazy they're all about the same they all have a bunch of bullshit scenes they're just like what the fuck is this for mm-hmm. but I recommend it yes it's it's still pretty funny <laughs> uh, it's, it is uh, Zola Z-O-L-A is the name of the movie mm-hmm. based on a true story of 158 Twitter piece Thread. tweets, Twitter <laughs> threads, Twitter tweets, tweety tweets. <laughs> do, 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 do. Um, yes. <laughs> nice, nice. I was trying to do tweet, 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 and leap. That's what I was going for in my head. Yeah, I was going rock and robin in my head, and mm-hmm. that came out with Manamana. 
<laughs> it shows how his brain works. My brain just trying to do the most. Do the most of. Um. Fuck the next movie. So we uh the past week, past few weeks, we've been talking about we want to watch some of these potentially Oscar nominated movies. Oh, man. You know some things that have come across. And seems like they're going to be getting some big recognition. It seems like they're going to be winning some good awards coming up in the next few months. For no reason. <sighs> so For we start. No reason. We started off with Spencer, which is a movie where Kristen Stewart portrays Princess, Princess Diana. Mm-hmm. And this isn't the the later portions of their marriage uh, with her and whatever the fuck that dude's name is from England, Woody Bush. If you know, you let us know. Um. <laughs> where their their fucking their relationship was starting to end there were rumors about cheating there was uh, a lot of speculation in the news and shit like that going on so they go out for a christmas extravaganza dinner with the queen and all these other royal motherfuckers and i guess like their their whole thing is that they have to eat three pounds or they have to gain three pounds over the course of the weekend to show that they really for she on she, I think she's the no. only one that has to No, do it's everybody. That. Everybody got weighed. Oh yeah, I think they did say it was tradition, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's tradition. Yeah, that's right. Um so everybody has to has to gain 3 pounds. Mhm. And uh, you got Kristen Stewart in there and I'm telling you the uh, the opening bits probably the first 5 minutes into it, you're going to get the feeling that this is Kristen Stewart. <laughs> She's. It is basically like they just took her out of Twilight and threw her into this. It was a horrible portrayal. Very bad. Very, Very bad. bad. In Outside my of, opinion, anyways. except for the scenes where she's with her kids, right? Everything else is fucking terrible, dude. Because it's Kristen Stewart, her holding her arms just close, and she's Crossed. doing that weird fucking breathing. And I can't really to talk. The side thing. like. <laughs> I just, I just feel hungry right now. Right. You know, it's it's uh fucking just really not good, man. Fuck, it was so boring. They're trying to tell us that like I'm surprised I didn't fall asleep. They're they they're trying to explain that like Princess Diana is like she's kind of losing it at this moment in time. She her mental stress is getting to her so she's starting to have visions she's got a little bit of bulimia going on where she's throwing up everything that she's eating because she and she's feeling pressured from the family because they're not treating her the same anymore literally all of that is like slightly hinted facts it's it's the alluded l- to like a bit but it, they don't dive into it like in the slightest it's almost like this movie was directed by lacroix <laughs> La in, the, in the sense of like <laughs> Here's what they wanted you to get, and we're gonna place it right next to it. <laughs> I you know what I'm you. saying? Like, you you have to do your digging and you have to fill in your blanks. It's with in in order to make it work. So many blanks, bro. Like it was just so many like open ended situations that like didn't seem like we were ever gonna get to a conclusion on like at ever all. like ever at all. It seemed like nobody really wanted to talk or explain or even have like any type of build up to anything there was no like giant like or even a small type of controversy that happened or or conflict that happened in this whole thing right and there could have been so much more man they could have executed it a lot better i hope this does not win anything I, I can I can agree with that. Yeah, it does not deserve any type of Academy Award. Right. I don't even want it to be nominated. I thought Get it was going to be longer here. than the three days too. Like you know, like it wasn't just going to be yeah. based off of just that weekend because it seems like you know y'all were making it seem like there was going to be a lot more shit to going to take place based off of the slight conversations that she was having with people with the teeny bits of information they were giving mm-hmm. her because mm-hmm. everybody seemed like they had their secrets and they didn't want to explain shit the walls have ears everybody knows what you're doing then what the fuck is going on then like tell me what's going on right. bitch like this shit was just weird very weird very that, yeah 
I straight up now tell me do you really want to love me forever oh anyways um straight up zero out of ten i do not recommend recommend this movie for anybody terrible yeah and i watch a lot of movies like that and i just didn't feel that one like in the slightest like it didn't feel like we were getting anywhere or learning anything about the character like at all it felt like I just watched something for two hours. That's what yeah. it, like that's it. Literally I just watched was just playing. something. Right. I so. could agree with that. And then the next is Belfast. Oh boy, Belfast. Taking place in the nineteen sixties. The late nineteen sixties. Black and white at full. Bla- it's it's entirely not entirely filmed. Except for that first part. No, because there's the parts oh, when yeah. they're in the movie theater that's watching right. where it's color, but it's set right. in the nineteen sixties where the uh, Catholics are um, fighting with the Protestants, I believe. Yeah, I think it's the Catholic and the in Belfast. So they're they're kind of um, just at each other's Riding. ends. There's riots and everything like that because they're trying to put the Catholic uh, push the Catholics or the Protestants. I can't remember. The Catholics are trying to push the Protestants out, right? And they don't want them around. Mm-hmm. Protestants are trying to push the Catholics out. That's what I said, right? Protestants are trying to push the Catholics out. Yeah. I think you didn't say that, but I think I said it the other way. Right. Whoa. So yeah, um, they're they're trying to push them out of their their little town, mm-hmm. which is, um, which is Belfast, but it's a little section of that town. Um, and it pretty much follows this one family, and you get more of this little boy than you do anything else, who's just trying to get an idea of what's going on you know he he understands that the protestants and the catholics don't get along and that the protestants are trying to push the catholics out he is a protestant himself him and his family are technically safe Mm -hmm. and don't have to worry about anything um however you know living on the same street as the catholics you're seeing a lot of shit go down and there's like this new uh the leader of the riots i'll say is kind of yeah. like talking to all the protestants and it's pretty much like look if you're not with us you're against us so i need you to be with us or else i cannot uh protect you i, I can't whatever. protect you you and, gotta pay uh, these taxes right you gotta pay these taxes on top of what ireland's already taken for taxes um, and the the father doesn't really he's not there a lot he's mainly working a lot more than he's doing anything else and um, I I will say though for this movie the thing that I appreciated the most about it is the fact that it's majority in black and white mm-hmm. and the set of the movie looks like a very old school set where it's like built in a studio and everything's like close knit mm-hmm. where they're filmed together I see what you're saying. Um, like whenever people are on the back patio talking, the people in the kitchen can hear them and relate to it. It has a very nostalgic feel, uh, feel to it, and I love that part of the movie. Yeah, that was a good aspect of the movie. Yeah, yeah. but I, overall, the story was very lacking. bland, lacking, very bland. Because again, you're you're trying. People are hinting at things, mm-hmm. you know. And like you're you're saying that these Protestant or these Catholics are bad people, but you're not giving us that conflict. You're not showing this little kid running into an issue where he's like seeing Catholics not be bad people, and so he's having that internal struggle of like, are they actually bad? Or are they not bad? What's going on? You know, why are people acting this way if they're if it's not really the case? And you're also not getting it the same either, where he's running into Catholics and Catholics are doing bad things, and he's like, "Oh no, fuck these people." Mm-hmm. This kid is pretty much. They even try to bring a love interest into his story, and it goes nowhere. <laughs> he's got a little girl in his class that he he absolutely adores, and he wants to ask out and. They say that he goes by her house every day and, like, stares in the window like a fucking creeper until she notices him, but she always just does her homework. But, um, you don't really see a lot go on. Nothing builds from it, technically. Yeah. Yeah, nothing really builds from it. It's, it's like, pretty much this entire movie felt like the beginning 
<laughs> of a movie. <laughs> this is all build up, and there's there's no release. That's it. I'm I'm getting blue balls from these movies. <laughs> you know. Jesus Christ. Y'all over just teasing me and you know fucking you want to dry hunt me the entire two and a half hours and not give me anything. Like fuck you guys, man. <laughs> no type of release. None. Yeah. None. That's sad. Uh but yeah, so Belfast, I, I only recommend it if you want to take a good look at like some nice decent scenery and some some pretty cool camera angles um but i i I would not recommend it for the actual story i I don't think that this should actually win any type of cinematic um or academy award yeah yeah academy awards oscar nominations or none of this like that yeah absolutely yeah cinematic blue balls that's what we're getting man the cbb's that's some painful shit. Mm-hmm. Actual blue balls? Cinematic blue balls. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not talking about blue balls. <laughs> As in you don't want to bring it up on this podcast? Or? I don't want to bring it up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Guess we're not going to have any fun topics for today, guys. Sorry. <laughs> That's what you consider. <laughs> all right, we're not going to be talking about blue balls today. No balls. No balls at all? No balls of blue. Huh. I see balls of blue. <laughs> <laughs> clouds of white. <laughs> Those clouds are semen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, we also watched... I, I had recommended another movie that I really wanted to watch. Because it has Jack Black in it. And it's... I wanted to see Jack Black's ability to do other roles than this, like crazy comedic character who does like scats but it turned into a Cameron Diaz movie it turned into a Cameron Diaz and Jude Law movie <laughs> we watched a movie called The Holiday where it's got uh, Cameron Diaz Jude Law Jack Black and some English chick that I don't even know her name wow. but she's famous she is famous like once you see her you're like I've seen her in other things facts definitely um and like it's crazy because they're all four on the poster for this movie and boy it, no the, the the girl that Jack Black is supposed to have a relationship with she has more of a relationship with this old 19 or not 1980 He's like 90 but years this old, 90 yeah. year old man who lives next door than she does with Jack Black for a good portion of the movie yes yeah she meets him one time that's it for like a minute then she's with this old man for like a good portion and then she meets up with jack black again and mm-hmm. that's, that's mm-hmm. literally how it goes and then she meets up with jack black again for the third time and that's when we find out that the girl that uh jack black is actually engaged to is cheating on him the whole time mm-hmm. and then that's when it comes back to him and uh jack black and and his girl or the the one that's from england Mm-hmm. Um, wow, we have not explained anything in this movie so hard. Uh, so, <laughs> anyways, what we do <laughs> start from the beginning. Start from the beginning. <laughs> all right, so it starts off. You got this girl in England who is in love with like her boss, pretty much. They dated for a few years. It never went anywhere from there. She still loves him. He keeps leading her on while he's dating somebody else the whole time. And then they're at a Christmas party. And it's announced that the guy that she's in love with, uh, his name is Jasper. Her name is Iris. Iris. We'll start using names. (laughs) Uh, This is going to be so much easier. (laughs) So Iris is in love with Jasper. Jasper keeps leading her on. At the Christmas party, Jasper's like, everyone, I'm getting married to Elizabeth. And Iris is like, what the fuck, Jasper? So iris is completely losing it she goes back to her cottage and she's getting drunk and she's like i can't handle it anymore i need to go do something else (laughs) yes i need to get away from all this countryside life yes flash over to la (laughs) you've got a hot uh it's cameron diaz Diaz. (laughs) (laughs) you've got cameron diaz who is a uh she's a movie producer um, so she's movie trailer man, producer, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah she's you know, a movie producer, um, and she's setting up a trailer for a movie that she's doing, 
and she works with like these people who uh, like sound technicians and shit like that Mm -hmm. and at the start of her entrance she's with a man and they've been together for a while and he ends up cheating on her and she finds out about it and of course she's like fuck you get out of my house i don't want to deal with you anymore fuck you punches him in the face and they allude to this whole thing to where like she's emotionally reserved she can't even cry cameron mm-hmm. diaz's character and that's supposed to be like a big thing for her and it's, it's it, it comes back later but like really not it's that big of a not, thing yeah. so she's kind of like you know what i'm always this workaholic i don't ever get to spend time by myself and i don't want to be in this house where i've spent all this time with this man who just cheated on me mm-hmm. so i need a getaway i ASAP. need a getaway so she goes on to airbnb before airbnb was a thing because this movie set in 2005 this is basically the origin of airbnb People pretty much in houses <laughs> um and she looks online for a nice little english cottage out in the english countryside and that's where iris and cameron diaz meet up and they're like meet up virtually (laughs) my house is available but we have to do a house swap so that means you're coming to england and then i'm going to la and they agree to it because they're both fancy and have a bunch of money and they can just whimsically afford flights like that in 2005 because in october uh, <laughs> december oh in december christmas because yeah, they're in, time, like right. week of christmas that's right that's right um and so they fly and they cross paths and and one goes to la and the other one goes to england <laughs> and then from there you hardly ever see iris for a good portion of the movie it's all camera yeah you you only see jack black one part in the opening fucking 45 minutes Facts. was it how long was that movie it's like a two-hour movie, it's two-hour right? movie yeah it's like 213 something like that yeah i don't know um and uh, yeah you see jack black in the very beginning because he's working on the movie uh like the instrument for it or mm-hmm. not the instrument but the music for it right the score the score there we go thank you mm-hmm and um it's crazy because there's another part in the beginning where she, uh, the Cameron Diaz's character goes to work on the score again and it's not even Jack Black working on it anymore it's John Krasinski <laughs> and it's like you dead ass have Jack Black in this movie for what <laughs> why do you have this man in this fucking movie um and then uh it, anyways it's mainly showing everything to do with Cameron Diaz in England mm. because while she's in England iris's brother shows up and who's iris's brother the handsome the slutty jude Jude. law (laughs) the handsome and slutty is well yeah because uh, so jude law's character in this movie is apparently he sleeps with a lot of people that he meets in bars a lot of one night stands is what is is what was going on he was drunk at a bar it's like one o'clock two o'clock in the morning there and he ends up banging on what he assumes Iris's house where Iris should be at. And Cameron Diaz opens the door and sees that it's Jude Law. And Jude is just like, who the fuck are you, Brenda? You are not my sister. Yeah, so he comes in. They start talking. They hit it off. They kiss. They fuck. First night. Both of them. Sluts. Bang, bang they're bing bonging in the door uh, in the bed (laughs) and uh so they 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 hit it off from there Mm -hmm. and um this is where you start to get into the romance of everything because from there on out you're pretty much only going to see cameron diaz and june law talking about oh i'm only going to be in town for a short time i don't want to don't want to get attached oh well this is perfect like we don't we don't have to get attached because we're only going to be in town for a short time. Ha ha ha. And, um, his no. Voices. Yeah, my voices were backwards. I that know, part. that's why I was like, his <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you, you start to see this relationship form between them two, which is very surface level at that. They're trying to, I think there's a part where Jude Maul says that he loves her, and I'm like, how? How do you love her? Just met her. You just met. You know nothing about this woman. You ha- you have no idea that she's a workaholic and is going to put that box like though. Who knows? <laughs> this is what toxic dick does, man. Hell, what are you? Toxic dick and toxic box will keep everything together. The tox box. 
Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, man, it's it, like, you're just like, oh, I love you after two days of fucking knowing you, you don't know that she's a workaholic and she's going to put her job over everything before you, you don't, you just found out that this man has kids and he's a widower, a widow, man, not a she, widower. That makes she, people widows. She thought he was a cheating ass nigga though. Yeah, she thought she he was fucking all these hoes. All right. Out here slutting around with Olivia and so Angelica. Big. Sophie. Sophie, yeah, Sophie. Sophie. Never mind. I'm sorry. Sophia and Olivia. Yeah, 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 and not Angelica. Not Angelica. Anyways, flash over to L.A. So we flash <laughs> over to L.A. and you've got Iris, and Iris is enjoying this nice, gigantic mansion that she's in, and Jack Black has to come by and pick up some music for the trailer, or he has to pick up like the actual trailer so he can put the music to it or some shit like that. One of those two things. And that's where we get our first encounter with Iris and Jack Black, mm-hmm. which is really nothing. It's like a, hey, uh, I came to pick this up. Oh, well, I got to check and see with her if it's okay first. All right. Well, I'll come back later. All right. Hey, honey, can we go? Yeah, I'm going to be out. I'll see you later. Hey, yeah. everybody. And that's really what it was. Yeah, and Jack Black, this is my girlfriend, Maggie. Oh, yeah, my girlfriend, Maggie. Hi. Yeah, Say I'm, hi, Maggie. I'm with her, and you're here. And she's like, oh no, I've got something in my eye. And he's like, I'll get it for you. Does this weird hand motion to get this thing out of her eye. Yeah. And that's <laughs> supposed to be their meat cute. You know, <laughs> I wish we had visuals. Be so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's supposed to be their their first uh, their first interaction with each other. That's supposed to be really cute and let us know that they're going to boink later on. All right. There's some blossoming relationship forming yeah. right here. And, um... Then she just hits it off with this old guy who lives, like, down the street who used to be, I guess, like, this giant screenwriter for Hollywood back in, like, the 30s and 40s. And she hits it off with him and starts hanging out with him. And then um, Jack Black has to come by again uh, a few days or, like, the next day to, like, pick up the actual the the music and um, or the video. I, don't, I still don't know which one. Mm-hmm. And um, the old man has now turned the house into an old Hanukkah party for all of him and his old Jewish buddies. Mm-hmm. And um, and Jack Black joins in, and he's over here making scat diddly doo noises and shit like that, and being old Jack Black like he usually is. Uh, and then you fucking flash forward to the next day again and and you've got jack black and iris hanging out at a blockbuster which was kind of crazy because i ain't seen one of those in a minute you know it's been a minute since you've seen a blockbuster in a movie seen a, man it's, it's crazy they, you know they filmed that at the at the last blockbuster <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah they're at a blockbuster and um Jack Black's being his charming self, being like in the Titanic. You had Hans Zimmer, who was like, um, because that's music in Titanic. And um, Iris is just like, oh, he's so charming. Look at him being all loving and bleh. He's and all into the arts. Look at him yes. pick these notes out and skadiddly doodle them in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way he skadoodle up. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way his skadiddles. <laughs> the way that his tongue is just flicking around with his skill little blah blah so, <laughs> so <laughs> fantastical. <laughs> um, I want him to do that on Malabia. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, fucking uh, Jack Black then sees his his fiance outside walking down the street with another man while she's supposed to be in El Paso filming for a movie. Right. And he fucking loses his shit. And he's like, Maggie, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know if that's losing his shit, but... <laughs> he, didn't see, he didn't lose his shit. He kept, <laughs> he kept his composure. He did. He was mad um, cool about it. But then, Bam. you know, he, he goes back and has a nightcap with Iris. And it's just like, dude, why do I love these people who fucking treat me like shit? And she's like, huh, I know what you're talking about. This Jasper dude in England <laughs> fucking totally did the same shit to me. <laughs> fucking a-hole. Um... And then that's it. They don't even allude to them even liking each other at that point in time. They don't. And then the next scene, Jasper shows up on the doorstep and surprises Iris. Hey, baby. And it's just like, 
pretty much like some, hey baby, I've always liked you and I would still like to doodle you. <laughs> would you like to still doodle me? And she's like, Jasper, I've always wanted you to say this. Yes, absolutely. But, but are you still getting married? And he's like, baby, I thought you wanted a doodle. <laughs> <laughs> basically and she's like you did not answer my fucking question and he's like do you want to doodle or not <laughs> well do you want to doodle or not <laughs> and she's like you know what Jasper fuck you and then she goes to this award ceremony for the 1980 year old dude not 1980 year old dude I don't know why I keep doing that the 80 year old dude <laughs> She goes to an award ceremony for him, and Jack Black happens to be there and sitting next to her. And he's just like, hey, what are you doing for, like, New Year's Eve? And she's like, I'm going back to, L- not London, but I'm going back to England. And he's like, I can go to England, too. Uh, can I be your New Year's Eve kiss? And then they kiss right then and there, and then for some fucking reason, that's supposed to be their relationship? Basically. These relationships are going to falter in three, four months. <laughs> Yeah, I want I want a sequel to this movie showing how bad their relationships are. This movie is called The Holiday, by the way. We I don't think we even we did. fucking did we? You did. Okay. You did originally, but yes, for our new listeners, who is Greg? How are you, Greg? Good seeing you again. But yes, this is The Holiday Rundown, <laughs> starring Jack Black, Jude Law, Cameron Diaz, and some English twat. and some English twat. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. We did watch that. Sad. I watched. We watched the voices. Oh, we did. Yeah, I had already seen that movie, so I wasn't really paying attention to it. But yeah, we did watch that. The Voices, yeah. which is a movie starring Ryan Reynolds. Seems a twenty four as fuck. It's not. And and it's not. <laughs> it's funny though. I found it more hilarious than I did scary. Uh, Ryan Reynolds' character this is young Ryan Reynolds, like 05 Reynolds. Very young. <laughs> you can yeah. see how young he is. Yeah, this is like 05 Reynolds. Was there, who else was famous in this movie? Uh, the Anna one Kendrick chick. Lamar. Anna Kendrick Lamar, that's her name? Yeah, because she's a rapper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What it's um uh, it's about Ryan Reynolds. He's a uh, he's got uh, some mental, mental issues. issues. Right. I didn't know how to exactly. I don't know if he's like way. schizo. He's hearing voices. Uh, he- so schizophrenia. Yeah, I believe that's what that is. Hmm. Um. But yeah. So it pretty much he he mainly hears his voices from his dog and his cat. And his cat is Mr. Scottish. Whiskers. Yes. Nice little Scottish bun. And his dog is like some old country western dude. He, he's the moral support. <laughs> he is, he's, he's the more, um, oh, you're doing great, buddy. <laughs> you're doing so fantastic. Such a good job. Oh, and meanwhile, the cat is just like, you should get killed, people. You should absolutely fuck them up. You fucking pussy. <laughs> Did you, fucker? <laughs> But uh, pretty much it takes place in like this random uh, small town. Uh, they, they're working in a small shipping facility called Milton. Um, and uh, Ryan Reynolds has a crush on a woman who works in accounting. She's a, another British woman. Um, and so he has, a, he has a crush on her and he is socially awkward. Not only that, he's clearly on medication because he's, he's a troubled child. He's got some issues. So people kind of like shun away from him. They don't really associate with him. They talk shit behind his back. And Claim this girl, Fiona, like is one of them. And um, he he finally gets the nerve to ask her out on a date to a Chinese restaurant that he always enjoys. And she stands him up. And she decides to go out and get drunk with all the people instead. Uh, at the bowling alley? I think it was like a karaoke bar, like a bar or something that oh, was doing bar? karaoke. Oh, okay. Because I know Fiona was on stage singing. I remember that. Mm, much, at okay, least, so, okay, yeah. okay. And um, so <laughs> yeah, it's like raining out, and um, Anna Kendrick is with uh, Fiona, and they're they're trying to um, they're they're all leaving at this point in time. Anna's like, "Oh, do you need any help?" Fiona's like, "No." Fiona tries to get into her car to start her car, and it doesn't start. Who happens by at that moment in time? 
by none other than Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> or knighting shining armor. Shining armor. <laughs> and so he happens to uh, just drive by perfectly at this moment in time and sees Fiona uh, soaking wet and is like, hey, I'll give you a ride. Like, hop in the car. And now Ryan Reynolds is a very nice person. He's, there's no evil, malicious Good intent boy. at all. He's a very sweet individual. He really cares for Fiona. He doesn't mean her any harm whatsoever. But as they're driving, they happen to hit a deer. And the deer crashes through the window. There's blood all over Fiona. And the deer is just like hanging there, fucking about to die on the dashboard. And Ryan Reynolds, since he hears voices, hears the deer telling him like, Oh, you gotta kill me, Davey. Fucking take me out. I don't know his real name. Jerry. (laughs) Jerry. Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, Jerry, you gotta kill me. So fucking... Ryan Reynolds' character, Jerry, pulls out this gigantic, like, 14-inch Don't worry, fucking Mr. hunting knife. Uh, <laughs> Why does he sound like Michael Jackson? I don't know. <laughs> no, Blanky, Don't worry, no. Mr. Deer, no. But he's like, don't worry, I'll, I'll stop your suffering, and, like, fucking slits the deer's throat right there in front of Fiona while she's, like, freaking out, and blood squirts all over, and she's just uh, he's just like hey like don't worry about that the deer asked me to do it and then at that point in time she's like this fucking dude's crazy (laughs) and so she gets out of the car and starts running and he's like chasing after her but not really chasing he's walking with the knife and he's like no fiona you're gonna get dirty (laughs) no fiona Fiona. dirty Don't do it. No. <laughs> You're running in the woods. No. And Your white dress, Fiona. No. <laughs> and um, then she trips and falls. And then he trips and falls into her with the knife. Literally trips and falls, though. Not malicious at all. And then he's just like, oh, you're you're suffering, aren't you? And she's just, she's just kind of like looking at him like this fucking yeah bitch face <laughs> <laughs> like no shit that was, it was fucking stabbed right and then so he completely just stabs her like what like fucking twenty times yeah he multiple at least we'll yeah. just say multiple, multiple. <laughs> you know a lot just, of stabbing a lot, lot of stabbing stabs, yeah because they held that scene for a minute a oh, hard minute so yeah and then um. He he carves her up. Carves her up. No, he takes, leaves her there. He leaves her there, and then the dog and the cat tell him how, to, bro, you gotta go clean up this fucking body. Go get the body. So he goes back the next day and he picks up the body and he brings it back to the house and he chops it up and puts it in the Tupperware. Facts. And puts her head in the fridge. And now, since of course he's hearing voices and he's going crazy, he's, he's not taking feel. his medication. The head of Fiona is now talking to him. And the head of Fiona is like, you need to get me some fucking friends. I'm lonely here in this fridge. And so get back to the killing. Right. Then comes to his next love interest, Anna Kendrick Lamar. Which she already had a thing for him anyways. She did. She, she was trying to get into them draws first right. encounter. She was <laughs> like, we could be lovers and friends. Um. Yeah. <laughs> That's how she was. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly how she was. John yes, C. Thank yeah, no. you. Um, and she's just like, you know. Like, throwing like, herself Throwing at herself him. at him. Right. So like, you want to go back to my place? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just literally fucking said hi to you. But sure. Um, no, they went to TGI Fridays on a Tuesday. No, they didn't go on a Tuesday. He said, she said it's not lit on a Tuesday. No, I thought they still went. Or did they take her to some other place? I want to say they went somewhere else. Okay, I can't whatever. They of, went yeah. out. Yes, they did go and hang out. You know, for food and whatnot. And they kind of hit it off, you know. And then she's like, you want to go back to my place for a nightcap? And then he takes her to a cabin in the woods. His old house. And it's like, right here is where I could murder you, but I won't. I'm in love. Yeah. And then they go back to her house. And they boink. They bing bong. <laughs> bang bang. He fucked her life. <laughs> <laughs> fucked her life up. Took a ride for the cy- uh took a ride on the cyclone. <laughs> no, and, I'm saying um, the pit bulls was downstairs, so you know he was upstairs going hard. <laughs> <laughs> 
and um, <laughs> just uh, they 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 boinked, they bing bonged, and they they hit it off. And um, then uh, the next night, she wanted to surprise him with a whoopee cake at his house, and which is a box cake. Yeah, it's a box cake, but not the box cake because he got that the night prior. Mm-hmm. Um, so she shows up at his house and he's like, oh, fuck, I locked myself out of my house, which you completely surprised me at. And you should not be here right now because I'm talking to Fiona's dead head. And, um, she's like, well, you know, like, I, I guess like, I don't have to be here. And he's like, I'm going to go in through the skylight. And he climbs up on top of the house and tries to sneak in through the skylight. And meanwhile, she's just like, I'm going to pick the door with my bobby pin and she gets the door open and she walks in and you get to see this this is a pretty cool scene actually because with him being schizophrenic and like delusional it's always shown that his house is in a nice neat kept order but now with her going in you just see trash piling up you see the body parts in the in the tupperware and you see the blood everywhere blood everywhere still right like you actually get to see the reality of what we're actually dealing with here and it's kind of cool to see that that point of view in the in the movie. Mm-hmm, definitely. And then you got Ryan Reynolds who pops up on her and is like, "You should not be in this house. I told you I was going through the skylight. Why the fuck didn't you listen, bitch?" Um, and then some shit happens, and he kills her. And now her head is in the fridge. Now we got two talking heads. Yeah, and they're both like, "Hey, brother, you did nothing wrong." But then the dog, Bosco, is like, hey, you remember when I said you weren't evil? And he's like, yeah. He's like, you're fucking evil. <laughs> is it okay to retract that statement? <laughs> then uh, the homegirl of Anna Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, there's another person that works in the accounting department. And it's just kind of like, hey, we haven't seen Anna and Fiona in a little bit. And the last time we did see them, they were, you know, talking to Jerry. So she shows up at Jerry's house, and they don't even give us a whole explanation. They just show her head in the fridge. She's, he killed her as well. Right, he just murked her. And it's so crazy because everybody's cars were still outside. Yeah. How the fuck did this movie end again? Um, he, he kidnaps his, his therapist. He gets killed. Does he get killed? Yeah, he gets killed. By the cops? I want to say it's by the cops. I'm not. I can't remember who killed him. I remember he falls on the ground. He has his last little conversation with the with the animals, and then that's when he has that fucking inner. Uh, I don't know what the fuck they call it. Dream sequence type thing where the cat and the dog walk away from each other. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Damn. I cannot remember the last like five minutes of this movie. Anyways, he ends up yeah. kidnapping his therapist as well because he goes to talk to his therapist and is like, "Dude, I think I'm fucking losing it because like I've killed three people now, mm-hmm. and I have not been taking my medication, and like fuck my meds, I don't need that shit." Right, and she's like, "I'm gonna call the cops," and he's like, "No, the fuck, you're not, bitch," and he kidnaps her, and then he takes her back to his place, and then she's like he brings out the heads and like shows her and any fucking good solid movie though i'm gonna give it like a seven out of ten i could say that at least yeah Yeah, seven out of ten it's very b-rated but still good at the same time it's enjoyable recommend it it's called the voices by ryan reynolds by ryan reynolds no it's not by with Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> so I was like by Ryan Reynolds. I had my eyes closed at that moment in time. So that's okay. why I fucked up. I can't think and speak when my eyes are closed. I can't thunk and spunk. <laughs> speak and spunk. Yeah, pretty much. True. So, the so. next thing, are we gonna get into the game awards or do you wanna call it here? Mm, there really wasn't much on the game awards right there really wasn't much they showed us a little bit more of matrix resurrection suicide squad we got a better we did we, we got did some gameplay, gameplay for suicide squad which it you does look nice um, so yeah we could we could still for another like couple you know what i'm saying yeah we'll, we'll shoot for like another quick 10 minute recap of yeah. uh suicide squad at least and um yeah yeah so that's cool we can we can do that our our expectations on that so Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League is the name of the next uh, uh, 
DC game that's coming out from Rockstar. <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, not Rockstar, Rocksteady. Rocksteady, yes. Which is kind of like this four v or uh, this four player co op game. Where you pretty much you're gonna have to go around and literally kill members of the Justice League because they've been taken over by Brainiac, and um, it looks pretty fucking cool. Like the traversal on everything, the the arena, the enemies that are popping in, it seems very fucking fluid, and it seems like your roles as each character, because you can play as uh, Captain Boomerang, King Shark, Not Harley no Quinn. Uh, uh, and Deadshot, and out of those four, they each seem like they have their own different play styles, their own different um, maneuverability as well, and seems very uh, nice and enjoyable. I guess yeah. is the what I'm gonna go with. I did like uh, Nanawe's. Uh, I don't know why I keep saying it. King yeah. Shark. King Shark is kind of like the tank. Of the yeah, game, I liked his gameplay. Yeah. Um, Harley Quinn, some of her gameplay that they showed was actually pretty cool. Like, I like how it she was. gets around. She's um, very acrobatic and acrobatic uh, as shit. She's got that fucking agility meter all the way up because she's fucking she's hopping off of place. shit and yeah. she's kind of like she's almost using like a grappling hook, but not really. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, she's swinging around and sliding in between people's legs and hitting them with a baseball bat and a mallet, and that's right. pretty fucking cool. Captain Boomerang has like this teleportation thing that he's got going on. Yeah. Um, and that he looks like he's gonna be fucking fun. Yeah. Uh, I feel like he Deadshot looks like any other person in a mechanized suit. <laughs> in terms of like he can like he's got like a little jet pack he flies up he provides you know pretty much like it's basically a mandalorian yeah he's he's he provides like an arsenal support yeah he's the yeah. setting yeah i wouldn't play with him i, I didn't yeah I, didn't, I, I don't think i would play with him i would play with one of the others if i if feel I, like i would still test him out but i feel like i would he, test it out just because you know i like iron man and marvel's avengers i like his flight yeah i want to see how his flight is at least I th- I, it kind of just feels like he would be pretty basic in terms of the way that he plays though like mm-hmm. I, I don't feel like i'm gonna get anything like super fun or as much fun as i would get from the other three right you're just gonna get a lot of different ammo types with him right exactly it's, it's gonna really be heavy things. artillery type shit or not mm-hmm. really heavy artillery but you know flamethrowers snipers different types of ammo shock ammo shit Mm -hmm. like that like that's pretty much just what his is gonna be yeah you're probably gonna get like a ricochet thing where like it you can probably like take out multiple Mm -hmm. enemies with the one bullet type shit shit like that because he's gonna have a simple combat like melee wise anyways yeah if he he does throw hands yeah he's he's meant to stay back for right he's gonna have a simple melee yeah captain boomerang look like he his um his shit's gonna be like a uh, mid-range combat in a way, yeah. but he has some pretty cool close combat, you know, moves that they were showing off. Yeah, because you can get up close if you wanted to and like teleport up to them, and mm-hmm. um, but like it seems pretty fucking fluid though as far as the fighting goes. It doesn't seem like it's like a rip off of um, like Arkham Knight where you're pretty much just waiting for somebody to pop up and then you parry them. Mm-hmm. Or, like, you just hit a few times and go into a combo and then just, carry yeah. off of it. It looks like you're you're definitely going to be doing a lot of fun shit, pretty much. And I think that's the way that they're going with this game, is that they wanted it to be fun. Playful, in a sense. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, they introduce more people. Like, I don't want just the four. Oh, yeah. Agreed. I would like to see other characters of suicide squad like let me play with other people right you know you can and you can throw anybody that you wanted to in there mm-hmm. definitely because there's a lot of people have been a part of the suicide squad yeah. so you can actually go with some big names mm-hmm. and do it like that but yeah i most likely i feel like i would play with either either harley quinn or king shark yeah i would play with either one of them king shark is uh, again he's more of the heavy tank role well, um, but i can jump from buildings like a cannonball <laughs> yeah uh, that was the other thing too they showed him like kind of like doing this cannonball move where he runs into people and jumps down off of buildings or <laughs> kind of like, he moves how the hulk should move in marvel's the Avengers. yes he moves how the hulk should be moving yes exactly it's a perfect explanation we should have got that Hulk movement from uh, the first Hulk movie bit for <laughs> Hulk and Avengers bit. That's what it should have been. Right. 
that fucking leaping whole continents in a single bound. <laughs> That's that shit. But yeah. Um so yeah, King Shark, Harley Quinn, who you probably looking into. I think I'm going to probably stick with Captain Boomerang. Okay. I f- or at least that's who I'm going to first try out. Right, right. But I could see a potential for me using Deadshot. Um, I don't think... I, I try to actually stay away from tank rules mm-hmm. in a way. Um, Some so stigma? Huh? Some sort of stigma? Nah, I just... Uh, they're slow. Hmm. He seemed like he moving. Yeah, he, but he's slow. Yeah, I guess. Compared to, you know, Boomerang or Quinn or something like that, you know? So, I don't know. I'm not I'm not 100% sure. Be real. But, uh, I think, of course, Boomerang is what I'm going to go for first. I also want to see the customizability, like the gear. Because you're definitely going to be getting gear in this game. Yeah, definitely. You know, so you're going to be able to change up their costumes a little bit. And, like, you're probably going to have, like, some old school, like, uh, original uh, Jester outfits. Harley outfits or mm-hmm. some shit like that. So I'm I'm excited to see what that's gonna look like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, there are some uh, new details about the Black Adam movie mm-hmm. where it's supposed to be like the action scenes are gonna be on Infinity War and Man of Steel level kind of sequences. Hmm, okay. And, like, some of it's going to be involving magic. Some of it's going to be more on, like, a Dragon Ball Z level, they're saying. Hand to hand type Kind of like hand to hand. Hand to hand was struggling being, mm-hmm. you know, uh, contacts. But that seems pretty fucking cool. There's a lot more coming, in about, uh, coming out about Black Adam. Uh, we got to see uh, some of his suit. More uh, of some, his suit. Yeah, yeah, more of his suit. Like, and it just looks like the charred tar look on his fucking body. And that looks pretty fucking cool. It does. They said he removed all the muscle padding that they had in there. Uh, yeah, because it's like, not there's fucking no needed. Need. Yeah, like, there's no need. Right? He's huge. We get, um, supposedly an actual trailer for The Secrets of Dumbledore. Ooh. Harry Potter movie. Uh, you think that's going to come out around, like, the 20th anniversary thing that they're going to be doing? No. Like, their sit down thing? Oh, uh, yeah, because it's just... Mm, no. No? The 20th anniversary thing is on January 1st. Yeah. This comes out Monday. Oh, it does? Oh, okay, so that... I thought you... I didn't know it actually had, like, a release date for it. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. They had, like, a little cool. teaser trailer, and they said the actual trailer comes out on Monday. Mm. So... Mm. We should have that tomorrow. Look at that. Let's see oh. what that's gonna be like. Nice. It's dumb nice. but dope. Right, we get to see a little bit more of some double dough. Dumb we don't dope. get to see any more of our boy Johnny Depp, though. We don't. Fucking bullshit. Fucking right. Amber Heard. They're basically just gonna cut that portion of the story that they were gonna right. do. Did you uh, hear about the uh, the Batman? Where they have new scenes. Uh, the the I did see from Sundays with the boys actually. Yeah, yeah. From Sundays uh, never feel better. Sundays never feel better. Actually tuned me in on this tidbit of information. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, quite quite relevant. I it's, see. Yes, yeah, I didn't even know this. Out. I didn't know this dude was even in the fucking movie. Huh? Yeah. He I doesn't have any. Yeah, because he doesn't have any scenes in the trailer, right? None. None in the trailer. But uh, apparently, uh, so Barry uh, Keegan. Mm-hmm. Is, is his name? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the guy who played Druig in the Eternals movie. Mm-hmm. He has a mystery character that they have not revealed who he is yet in the Batman. And they are currently filming two or a scene two separate ways. One including this mystery character reveal and one not including it. And they're not sure which one they're going to go with yet in terms of... W- how they're going to place it into the movie but Barry Keegan I mean he a lot of people are speculating Joker I don't think it's going to be Joker I think they're going to want to stay away with that especially with Joaquin right Phoenix now. getting his other Joker movie definitely right now they want to um, stay away from that I think we could see him as something else though entirely maybe another rogue <clears throat> hmm maybe a uh, scarecrow level or even a Mr. Freeze um, and then we could possibly see him a in young Mr. Freeze in uh, the Penguin spinoff Ping that we're going to get with Colin Farrell. Penguin. Penguin. 
<laughs> uh, with Colin Farrell though. Um, so I'm I'm excited to see, or maybe we might see him as like a Robin. A uh, younger Robin. I don't know about younger Robin because he's clearly like fucking he's nineteen old, twenty. Yeah. I don't think he'll be able to pull that off. That'd be hilarious, though. I would be. I'm like, yeah, I'm Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Young Robin. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't fucking think so. You're a grown ass man. Right, right. Uh, he played in that movie with Colin Farrell that I was watching like a couple weeks ago. Um, the Killing of a Sacred Deer. That's what it's oh, called. Oh, that fucking weird ass movie, man. Weird ass movie. That's not an A24 movie. I don't think it is. No. I just associate everything like that with a twenty four. Anything now. weird and awkward is an A twenty four movie. It is an A twenty four film. Oh shit. <laughs> it is an A twenty four film. <laughs> Never mind. Fuck. So yeah, you know, it's one of those. So it's about um uh, Colin Farrell plays this um cardiologist, I wanna say, or, or cardio surgeon, something like that. He works on the heart. I know that much. He's a surgeon for the heart. <laughs> if you know the term, let me know. Um, so, he, cardiologist, I, cardiothoracic surgeon, mm. cardiothoracic surgeon. Okay, I don't want to say there's a particular term for it, but yeah, man. So yeah, open scene, heart beating, person die. You don't know who it is. Um, later, you see uh, Ben Keegan's character in a diner. With uh, it's all it almost gives you that vibe though of uh, what the fuck was that other movie with Colin Farrell where that shit with their dialogue was just weird as fuck. Uh, the lobster one. The lobster, yeah, that's what it's called. So it's pretty much they have dialogue like that throughout the whole movie, like so it's like on that level. Mm-hmm. Um, so his particular character, he was the son of the person whose heart that they were showing at the beginning of the movie. So, um, kid in his mind or Ben Keegan's character, uh, Keegan, uh, believes that Barry. Barry Allen. Barry Key again. Barry Key again. Yeah. Barry Key again. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Key again, this guy. So he basically holds a grudge against um, Colin Farrell's character for killing his father. Uh, or he feels that he killed his father. Mm. You don't pretty much like find out about that till like a little bit later on in the movie, but I'm just trying to speed it up so I don't give everything away. So um, he has that grudge. He drugs somehow or does something to his family to where basically it's like um they have like this like their their noses start bleeding um they lose their fucking um ability to use their legs um like i don't know what the fuck he like they never explained what he gave them to like get them like this and basically the end result is they have this like different phases and basically the last phase that they die Mm -hmm. so he basically was like you know make a decision on which one of your kids gonna die you know or everybody's gonna die you like you're not gonna die but your your kids or and or your wife are gonna die otherwise basically like you know that's pretty much how it went um he colin farrell's character took jit hostage trying to like make him like tell him how to like stop it or whatever he doesn't tell him colin farrell like at the end of the movie plays russian roulette or ring around or like spin the bottle with him and a gun Mm. puts a blindfold over his kids and his wife and places them in like three different areas and just basically spins around until he hits one of them wow and that's pretty much how the movie ends like he kills one of his children Mm. i don't want to spoil which one but um it's frankie he killed frankie frankie (laughs) <laughs> so yeah kills one of his children so like and that's pretty much how that is like you know you got a life for a life that's basically how Barry was in that movie I enjoyed it but their dialogue and like how they talked to each other was just so it gave me the lobster vibes yeah like literally. very weird dialogue right right but it's pretty much like that almost in a24 movies as well though mm-hmm. like it's pretty much like a like a thing that they should be like noted for weird dialogue and useless scenes sounds about right to me some of them be good some of them are like eh, I probably shouldn't watch this but I guess we're gonna call that an end to this podcast episode of Sundays with the boys yes yes yeah. yes yes we'll be back back again when the when live the, again when the sun is high on another Sunday Yes, uh, just for a fair warning for everyone, 
uh, our last podcast for this season is going to be on the 26th, so the day after Christmas. Um, the 26th after... of the day after Christmas, the 26th of December, just the voices. Anyways, continue. I don't want to talk to Chauncey anymore. This is just for the rest of you guys. Chauncey, go into your room. Um, this is uh, <laughs> just for you guys listening, not Chauncey again. We will be taking a break pretty much uh, the month of January. Uh, and then we're going to come back with season two. We're going to be hard hitting. We're going to be revitalized, uh, revamped, revisited, brand new logo, new background music, uh, visuals, all this other fun stuff, nipples, all great stuff. I hope not. Chance is going to be doing this shirtless no. for the first month. What? You got some stuff to make up for. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, if you're in the Tampa Bay area and you'd like to give us any recommendations or possibly come on to the show, feel free to hit us up at Sundays Never Felt Better at gmail.com. If you'd like to be up to date throughout the week on what we are going to possibly talk about on our show, please make your way over to our Instagram at Sundays Never Felt Better. And give us a follow. Like, subscribe, comment, and all that other fun stuff on all of our other pages. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Apple Music. Apple Music. Google Podcast. Google Podcast. Pocket Rocket Doodoos. Pocket Rocket Doodoos. This is Teddy. Signing off. This is Chauncey. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all day. Woohoo! <laughs> no, don't try to bring it back now. Woohoo! No, don't try to bring it back now. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, though. Peace. Yeehaw! <laughs>